Hello everybody, John Fulford here. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I want to help you get your 2023 off to a great start. And let's get some more sync licenses, right? Everyone wants more syncs. I'm here to help you get more syncs. So here are a few genres that you should not do if you want more and or better syncs, okay? Because more syncs doesn't always mean better syncs, okay? So I just compiled a list here today at the gym of three genres that you should shy away from. Why do I say should? Because there's exceptions to every rule. If you're known as the person to do this genre in Hollywood, of course you're going to keep doing that genre. If someone hits you up and wants to pay you money to do this genre, of course you're going to do it. But focus your attention on other genres. And what are those genres you should focus on? That's a, a tale for another video. So first, let's get to these genres that you should kind of shy away from. Number one, swagger rock. Anything having to do with swagger rock, why? You go on the websites of the biggest music library conglomerates in the world, type in swagger rock, and you get pages and pages of pages of swagger rock. The thing with music is that it doesn't it doesn't like die out, okay? If you have 10 apples and you eat one, then you have nine apples. If you have 100 swagger rock cues and one gets licensed, you still have 100 swagger rock cues, okay? So the supply of swagger rock is multiplying and multiplying. It's going up like, maybe not multiplying, maybe adding. It's not like logarithmic or anything, but it keeps going up steadily every year and while the demand probably does go up actually because there's more content now being produced for TikTok and Instagram and all this stuff the supply is going up faster than the demand okay so you're fighting a losing battle from jump and that's assuming your swagger rock is amazing right that's a, it has to be it has to be a plus grade even to compete that's why you see a lot of people, no disrespect, they do swagger rock, they're excited, they get a placement, they get their check, they get no sync up front, right? No money from the library, no sync up front from a network, they get their check and they made 18 cents off the swagger rock you and it was used on some football game or something. It doesn't make sense, well it does make sense, but it doesn't make sense, you get what I'm saying, a little, little uh, play on words there. Anyway, that's swagger rock, if someone calls you, offers you money to make it, a network calls you, a library calls you, then fine, go ahead, okay? If you know Dave Navarro from uh, Salsa Class or something out in L.A., well, let me know because that's really cool, number one. Number two, okay, then if he wants to make some swagger rock cues, then go ahead, right, because you have a, some clout with that. So that's the first genre. Second genre, okay? Future bass. Future bass is the new dubstep in terms of it's played out, okay? thing with future bass is you could adjust it you could do things to it so it does have some variety add a funk bassist add something cool you know swagger rock is kind of pigeonholed future bass is, has a wide a wider berth to make changes and make exceptions to the rule but there's just so much of that out in the marketplace there's just so much of it why splice you could download splice loops or you could download splice loops chop them up adjust them so they're in in um they're indistinguishable from your original music. Like, no one will know it's a splice loop. What I mean by that is you take the audio, convert it to MIDI, change it, different synth patch, all this stuff. You can mangle it, use it as inspiration, in a sense, instead of dr drag and dropping it. You get the idea. There's a wider berth of future bass variety that you could do if you really love future bass, okay? But, again... Unless someone's asking you for it with money. It's very easy for a library with no money to ask you for whatever crap they need that day because they're not paying you. That's a video for another time. Anyway, third genre, and this is going to be polarizing, okay? I'm going to have people in the comments on social media. Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I hope I know what I'm talking about. Ah, maybe my 20,000 cue sheets. Say, say I do know what I'm talking about. Anyway, vocal songs. Vocal songs. You need to do vocal songs. Don't shy away from vocal songs. I was so excited to tell you not to do instrumentals, I accidentally said vocal songs. I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to edit this. I'm doing this in one take. So give me a break. 
You don't want to do instrumentals if you can help it. This one has the widest berth because I do instrumentals all the time when networks call or music supervisors hit me up or sub publishers, you know, my network of sub publishers hit me up and they want instrumentals of a certain genre. I'm going to do that for them because the supervisors in their territory are asking territory are asking for it. That has a, that has a wider berth than future base. But if you could help it, vocal songs, vocal songs, vocal songs, the supply of vocal songs is constrained because you have to get another human or really good, um, AI plugins they have, but, those sound 99 times out of 100, you're getting a human to come in and sing. Okay, so the supply from jump is automatically constrained. And the demand is rising. But the supply isn't rising as fast as for instrumentals, right? So shouldn't that be where you want to go? Where you should aim doing vocal songs? Uh, you know, it could be oohs and ahs in the chorus, like real ones, not loops that you download. Those could be cool too in the background, background, but a real human that you hire or you collaborate with doing oohs and ahs or vocals, verse, chorus, verse kind of thing. Okay. Yes, it's harder to produce. Yes, it takes longer to produce. Yes, it's more expensive to produce. Yes, you could probably do five or 10 loop ridden instrumentals. For every one really great vocal song. Probably 50 instrumentals for every really, really great vocal song. But vocal songs are more in vogue, no pun intended, than um, than instrumentals. Okay, I would like if I would rather you have 10 really great vocal songs than 50 instrumentals. I would bet if one producer came and said they have 10 really great vocal songs, and another producer said they have 50 instrumentals. I would bet that the person with the 10 vocal songs will make a better income off of those 10 vocal songs, even if they have less of a, a cut. I mean, less of a, a percentage. Because vocal songs are in demand in America, where I am. They're in demand in other territories, even if they're not in the territory's native language. For instance, Taiwan uses a lot of French songs, and Italy uses a lot of English songs, okay? Okay. So go with what you can. Like if it's a great singer and they sing in a different language, go with them. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? If it's, a, if it's a great singer and they sing in English, go with them. If it's a great, it, great, being a great singer is what matters, okay? Hope that was useful. Hope that helps you. I know it's probably not what you want to hear. It's not. You know, you might be working on swagger bass or future rock or whatever to swagger rock and future bass right now. It's not the look if you want to make a great and sustainable income in sync licensing. I hope that was helpful. John Fulford here. I'll see you next time.